Oh, hello, uh, I'm Bernhard. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me on the vector synthesis experience. Um, I wanted to ask everyone, uh, raise their hands, who has a modular synthesizer at home? Okay, let's try, like, who, has, who likes cables? Okay. Who has an oscilloscope? Okay, that's a couple. Who has uh, maybe a laser? Who's working with Akin as a laser guy? Yeah. Uh, um, or a Vectrex, maybe? Like, have you heard of Vectrex? Okay. It's also, it's uh, like all these devices. Uh, uh, so I'm um, using modular synthesizers to uh, uh, make sound and also uh, do visuals or create a synesthetic experience where you kind of have the feeling that you see what you hear, a very close representation of what you hear, uh, which can be very hypnotic. And um, so uh, I, it's also a way for, it was a way for me to understand synthesis uh, uh, much better. I had no clue about this. And then uh, I, was, I had a synthesizer in, in a, like I was playing in a band and uh, I'm an engineer and I had one of these oscilloscopes and, uh, which uh, can show you uh, electric signals. And I hooked it up to the synthesizer, and suddenly, like the synthesizer, uh, mesmerized me in a way that, uh, uh, and I, in a way that I can, I could understand what the sound was doing. And uh, ever since I, you know, I connect always, uh, 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 think like this uh, to the synthesizer, to uh, play with it. And uh, I haven't gotten away from it uh, yet. And. Uh, I can uh, only um, endorse you to do the same or like uh, try to like spark the, 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 the flavor. Um, um, the workshop is called Vector Synthesis, uh, which uh, is actually there's sometimes a confusion if you uh, Google Vector Synthesis, you will find an entry on Wikipedia saying like that uh, Quark in the 80s, they trademarked a, a form of synthesis which they called Vector Synthesis in one of their keyboards, uh, which uh, was morphing wavetables, and they had a little joystick. And with the joystick, you could morph between the wavetables. And um, the position that you would move the, <coughs> sorry, uh, that you would move the, the, uh, the joystick would describe a vector. So that's why they call it vector synthesis which is very different from what I'm showing you today. I'm, this is vector synthesis in, uh, in, its, in another form, which I have, uh, like the oscilloscope will uh, draw a, a dot, and the vector is really like a point of something, or like we could be vectors, a point that has a direction. And so you can think of this system, uh, like there's an oscilloscope that creates the dot, but it's still, and it doesn't have any direction, and then uh, the modular synthesizer will kind of create direction of for the dot to move around. And um, so um, <coughs> I have a handout uh, for uh, if you want to pass them around because uh, uh, there's a, a, a very important, it's very simple, but maybe you can pass them around, uh, a very uh, simple patch that I will start with and um, that uh, makes, uh, that would make sense which is basically like the oscilloscope has two, uh, two inputs and uh, those two inputs, uh, if I touch the, <coughs> if I touch the cable, if I put them, then you will see like one, one cable will uh, deflect it uh, like uh, in one, one direction. So like one axis and uh, the other cable will do the other side. So up and down, left and right. And uh, if I set them to the same thing. So I have two inputs and I, if you look at the, so if you look at the handout, like the first thing is that, you know, you have kind of uh, the synthesizer at the top, there's a box saying uh, like a, a quadrature mod or oscillator. And there are two outputs from this going uh, to the oscilloscope, uh, into the inputs of the oscilloscope, uh, which represent like the two axes, X and Y. And at the same time, we'll uh, take uh, the same signals, like the same two signals, and put them into the PA, PA of the audio system. So we can actually hear and see at the same time, which is uh, like the very important principle that I want you to know. So uh, this uh, modular system I've arranged uh, before coming here. 
Um, it's very basic stuff. Uh, so there's like some a bunch of the per oscillators. There's uh, this uh, specific quadrature oscillators which have sine wave and co sine wave outputs. I'll show you like how to draw a circle with them. And uh, there's also one that calls the trapezoid through zero quadrature oscillator, which is uh, and it has like multiple waveform outputs. And we we'll look at the waveforms and draw different shapes and. Uh, then I have some filters. Most of them are uh, multi-mode filters. They have a, a band pass and high pass and low pass outputs, which is also important that you uh, have multiple outputs on uh, these devices. But basically, like there's some analog stuff like oscillators, filters, and then I have some amplifiers to like make the signal bigger and smaller or louder. And uh, and uh, yeah, and then I have some DSP stuff. Uh, Plates, or this is all from this is all not special stuff, or this is what you can buy in the shop. And uh, I just hook it up to the oscilloscope. So I will start the patch. Um, we have uh, the sound system connected, and I have a mic next to it. And I'll uh, plug the oscilloscope into the mic, and also we'll uh, put uh, left and right. We'll get the same uh, signal. So like uh, the, the picture on the, um, on the handout, so that your ears will get the same signals than your eyes would perceive. Uh, and then, you know, you basically, because we are sentient, be we're sentient beings, we try to make sense of our world with senses. And then if you maybe, uh, hear something and also see a representation of it, it may, will make more sense and maybe uh, help with understanding it more. So now I have uh, like the oscilloscope and the sound uh, like output and then we have uh, like two inputs uh, that we have to feed with uh, a sort of signal. And I have this module, it's a very basic module that uh, like amplifies and also puts uh, adds an offset so you can shift things around. Uh, which is from Bifaco, and I will uh, put the outputs here. And then we'll start to put in, uh, let's see. And next to it, also just for the ease of use, there's uh, like a mixer from Bustle, which is called Buddy. And it's a stereo mixer, so if I turn uh, one knob, like it will uh, control two uh, inputs at the same time, and I will connect the output of this mixer to the input of uh, the amplifier. And still, uh, you don't see anything on the scope, which is fine, because we didn't connect any source yet, but we'll do this now. So let's uh, connect this, this. There's a module called the quadrature through zero, uh, oscillator by Depfer, which is a true sine wave oscillator. And it has like a sine wave and a cosine wave output. And so if we like have those two inputs and uh, put it into the mixer, we should potentially bring up the sound and uh, it should draw a circle on the scope. And I will also turn up the sound. Um, so now we are seeing uh, the circle on the scope. Uh, there's also a, like a, an image on the handout uh, that uh, shows two pictures that there's like a sine wave on uh, the left side and then there's a circle on the other side. And if I switch uh, on the oscilloscope there's uh, two modes like this is like the XY mode this uh, OVA, which are, uh, we are looking at uh, at the moment. And if, I, uh, uh, if you had like a linear deflection over time and you would sweep uh, like a, with a linear function across the screen on one of the axes, you would also see the sine wave like this. And I think we could, uh, like now we see one channel only. And if we had both channels, you would actually see that there's a sine wave. So this is like a sine wave and a cosine wave. And they have something interesting in common. They have the same frequency, but they are a little, little bit off. Or they, are, they are shifted in phase. So they have a phase shift. 
and the phase shift that is uh, really interesting for this kind of display because uh, x and y or the x and y plane is uh, there's a 90 degree uh, angle difference so like if you have signals from the modular system that have a phase difference of 90 degrees it will make sense uh, on on the display also if you had like uh, the same signal let's try this out i can show you if i connect only the sine wave into uh, like I, I double up the sine wave and put the same into here and switch back to the, the mode then uh, it would be only like this line but as soon as there's an uh, so this is like the same signal going to both axes and so it's not very interesting it's just a line but as soon as you have a 90 degree phase shift between the two signals it gets more interesting and then you actually see the you see uh, something nice like a circle and uh, and so now like we could linear like we could watch uh, like the signal over time which uh, will like draw the, the sine wave but we can also watch uh, the circle uh, we can see the circle which is actually um, the sine wave is a function of the circle over time like uh, I think I remember something like this in mathematics so it's a way of looking at things like the one is over time and the other one is in reference to another signal so it's like two signals have something in common and uh, if you reference one signal to the next or to each other they they will create a dance in this case they will move in a circle if i slow this really down you can actually see that all we're doing is there's the dot and we have given the dot like a direction with this oscillator so it's like welcome to vector synthesis <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah so now we'll uh, do some patching i guess oh, it's really low that's why you can't hear the sound so if i if i play with the frequency basically what i'm doing is like spinning the dot fast around but as soon as it's uh, uh, like I think it's like about 25 frames per second the same with uh, like cinema you kind of see an, uh, like a, a constant line instead of uh, like on a dot moving because the, the inertia of the eye allows you to to see this or the, the, the brain tries to make sense and say ah this is actually moving in a circular motion and I start to see the circle and uh, yeah so uh, we we are running the circle through an amplifier, but static, and this, this amplifier also has two offset knobs. So if I add an offset, you could actually move the circle up and down with one axis, and you can move it left and right to position it. So that's a very handy thing if you want to move things around. But an amplifier can also um, amplify signals, and what does that mean? It makes the the signal is bigger or smaller, and uh, uh, I will uh, like take one of these uh, uh, stack cables, and uh, I have two amplifiers, and put the amplification uh, into. I will double up the signal, so both amplifiers of both axes get uh, the same signal, and then I will uh, I have an offset here, like a module. It's a bread and butter, so I can now control both axes here with this one knob and make it bigger and smaller. Yeah, let's uh, also amplify it here and add an offset, so just to center the image. And uh, so, and if you listen, so the amplifier will make things louder bigger the, the signal and the bigger the image will be so that you have a very uh, like a, you have a very direct representation of uh, what amplification does so the bigger the, the signal the bigger the the, uh, the louder the, uh, the not the sound the bigger the image so you have this uh, translation between sound and uh, visual and uh, so it's uh, it's uh, captivating and uh, I think you can understand what 
the amplitude down, so I want uh, like uh, an, um, an amplifier would do it to a signal very easily. And then I have this offset uh, module that I, I could turn like this, and I will uh, in inject uh, like a function uh, signal into there, so I don't have to turn, turn the knob like this. And uh, so now, like you can see that, uh, so it's being automatically controlled by the voltage of this module, for example, and I can play around with with the the amplitude modulation of the circle. Let's make this a little bit louder. And you see that sometimes, as the circle is getting bigger and smaller. So you can make it pulse it, you can also tune down the frequency. Bring it higher and then if you tune uh, the frequency to the same frequency, so now actually what we're doing is we're modulating the amplitude or the, the size uh, of the signal, which is called amplitude modulation. It looks like this and you can, uh, you can make this kind of spiral effects with the circle. And you can uh, have, you can see, like if I tune uh, the um, this function frequency to the same frequency as uh, the the oscillator, or uh, like in a, in a ratio, then you get standing waveforms, and you can create a, like you can tune visually. You can also hear like this is kind of it's like out of tune. You get some phasing effects. It would be like the same tone, so it's like unison. And just if you detune it just a little bit, you get this phasing effects like da la la la. It's, it's without making a, like a beat, there's, there's kind of one happening already. This would be like double the frequency, so there's like a true ratio. And you can see like one, you know, like the circle would go around in one cycle, and uh, then uh, this uh, function would same time would go around uh, twice uh, twice as fast. So you can visually tune and then you can draw all kinds of uh, turn this down a little bit. You can uh, draw all kinds of flower shapes and you know but basically it's uh, like a circle and um, so that's uh, kind of uh, like very basic tricks that you can do with uh, like an amplifier an oscillator and the mix is just to I mix in maybe let's uh, try to mix in another signal to um, let's look at, an, at another circle because uh, like this module the blue one uh, the quadrature VCO from Tepfer has a true sign and it's very like th the circle is really round I'll show you another circle that is uh, also has uh, um, sine wave outputs and cosine wave outputs so quadrature outputs but you will see the circle is uh, looks different now. and uh, just by looking at the circle a bit uh, this is wrong sorry this is uh, one so there we have so this circle is also kind of looks like a circle but it looks more like a pillow and uh, which is not you know it's there's nothing wrong with this module and, um, but you instantly see, like we humans, we can see if something is round, like if a, you can see a perfect circuit, which is amazing, I think. And uh, you, so you can verify uh, like the precision of the modules in a way, not that I want to, or that, that is a good thing to do, because I think all, this, all of these modules uh, are, are very cool. But you can see that I think uh, this, like this has a core uh, sign, a uh, sine core within like the very uh, source of this oscillator is a sine wave uh, core and here I think the sine wave is derived out of a triangle that is kind of shaped into uh, what looks like a, a sine wave and you can see this here it's not a perfect circle let's uh, stop uh, maybe the modulation so it uh, but still it's you know let's say it's a circle and we mix now this circle uh, with the other circle so we have two circles, and then we play with we play with the, the the frequencies. So there's like one 
oscillator that makes one circuit and another oscillator that makes another circuit. Those two oscillators uh, have uh, different frequencies and, uh, and you can visually tune or you can also this a little bit off. You can you can also I mean you can hear that uh, that this is out of tune. But you can also like if you if you didn't hear the sound, you could actually uh, tune the oscillators just by looking at the by looking at the waveform. And when the waveform is kind of still and doesn't move around very quickly, the the frequencies align, or they they you you hit a, like a, a ratio of the same frequency or maybe double the frequency, so an octave. There's also like true ratio. I think a fifth is also a true ratio. Like a piano would be difficult to tune because it has a temperate uh, tuning. Uh, so, but with with these oscillators, uh, you can uh, kind of create these standing waveforms, which is kind of a like a harmonic harmonic uh, point of uh, two entities. And so, this should be in tune. This should be an octave. Uh, well, this is the octave. So it's, this is double the frequency. This would be the same. Amount and then you have this phasing effect, so it gets really small. This is too low for the subwoofer. So this is like a the third, uh, like triple the frequency. And you see here, it's like kind of you know, it also looks different, interesting, but it's it's difficult for the eye to see the. I'll turn this up just a little bit. create these standing waveforms. So there's two circles. Um, let's try uh, to put one circle. I have uh, like a sample in the whole uh, module. And let's get one of the circles out. And um, let's try something. Uh, let's uh, maybe visualize a sample rate reduction. So we put uh, the circle into this sample input and then um, we feed the same trigger from both sample and holds with uh, the, the same trigger, which will be from this oscillator here. And the output has to go, let's take some small cables. We go in the, sec in the same exact. Um, we go back into the mixer. So now we see the circle, and uh, I have. So the sampling hole will now chop up the circle. Let's make this. Uh, this is already a little bit bigger. And if I reduce uh, this, the oscillator here, you will see that there will be these dots appearing on the circle. Basically, the circle now the circle is being drawn with only four points, so we're reducing, you know, the, the sine wave into like only four samples. And since uh, we're we're triggering uh, this with uh, like a, a square wave from an oscillator that is, you can adjust, you can adjust the pulse width. You can also play with the the behavior of the of the the triggering uh, behavior. But this is kind of downsampling the circle and what it will do and it creates this uh, and again you can tune like the, the down sampling frequency to the sweeping frequency of the circle which is kind of uh, like yeah you tune things around or like if it's a really high friend sampling frequency you see the circle again and then so that's uh, like a very easy trick to do with a simple module like a sample and hold. And um, yeah, let's um, then uh, let's uh, look at the time. We have uh, 25 minutes. Um, then so this these are like uh, oscillators. Uh, maybe as this quadrature oscillator also has uh, some other outputs. Uh, the one that you know has this pillow kind of circle. It also has like a as triangular sine wave and then a phase shift shifted triangle uh, 
signal and if you connect it like this then you know it can, kind of becomes a, like a, a what do you call it like a diamond shape or like a like a square that's shine bright like a diamond I don't know. and um, uh, then also it has a rectangular and a, like a rectangular sine wave and a rectangular oh, this is the wrong one cosine wave so you can make a square and this is like and then again, the, fre the frequency of the oscillator makes the square. And then if you, if you modulate the, the, um, the amplitude, you can make this kind of zooming effect. This is really difficult to see. But, um, so you can make squares and circles and uh, and diamonds, uh, let's see, this one is a, this is like a, a sawtooth and a cool sawtooth. It looks like this. Like a, so you can also hear the character of the, the sawtooth, but their face, like they're always 90 degree in face, they will make this shape. And uh, so there are these oscillators that are kind of designed for the quadrature uh, uh, purpose. There's also an LFO. We can uh, look at this one, just for the sake of it. It's really slow, so it like will move the circle really slow. It's a sine wave oscillator, or, like low frequency oscillator. It's, it's a nice circle. And um, then there's also uh, filters, and um, the, if you uh, in in this particular case, if you have, uh, I don't know, like if you have a modular system at home and maybe you have a multi-mode filter uh, that uh, has uh, multiple outputs like band pass out and uh, uh, high pass and low pass output um, and they're resonant, you could actually draw a circuit with a filter, just with the resonance of the filter. And I have three filters, one is the cinnamon from Bustle, the wasp filter from Depfer, and also there's this... Uh, the same type of filter, filter. So maybe let's uh, hook up uh, one of the filters. Uh, let's start with the cinnamon filter. So with the state variable multi-mode filters, um, you have uh, which multiple, with multiple outputs, there is a 90 degree phase shift between band pass and low pass, and also a 90 degree phase shift between band pass and high pass outputs. So that's... Uh, uh, something that a friend of mine, Václav Belosek from Bastel, told me once and since then. So if I put the resonance uh, very high on the filter, and then the cut off frequency, this is very loud, sorry. A bit of mine. Maybe the signal is a bit too hot. But you can see that there's a 90 degree phase shift, otherwise we wouldn't see a circle. And um, so you can draw a circle with the filter, and uh, I think these filters don't self-resonate, the WASP filter and uh, the same type, so I can't draw a circle without in ingesting a signal into uh, the, the filter itself. But let's try uh, another filter and maybe put a signal into the filter, because what it will do, it will draw a beautiful spiral. So we take an oscillator which has a sawtooth and put it into the filter input, the depth filter input, and we'll... And then uh, this one has a blendable a low pass to high pass out. So you can make these singularities. You can kind of draw... You can make like these cone-like shapes just with the the resonance. So like if you crank the resonance it will start to you can see the, the resonance reson like the resonance spiral around the this uh, uh, this sawtooth wave. And uh, so this is kind of like very basic uh, additive uh, no this is subtractive synthesis uh, sweeping and a resonant filter which is a very nice thing to do I think. And uh, so and this is what it looks like. Well, 
this one, one, one. And with this one, you can uh, also like, it looks like it's three dimensional because you can cross fade between um, the high pass and the low pass on this output. It's a very good filter to do this. So you can also kind of uh, wind up the spiral and kind of look into the, into the um, singularity. Like I, I, it, this shape kind of reminds me of a singularity, like the gravitational pull of a, like a black hole. And uh, it's kind of weird if you think about this, uh, like what we're looking at is the behavior of uh, like uh, an electronic circuit that uh, in this case, uh, Dieter Döpfer, he designed the circuit. So, and I know if he knew about this or like if he embedded this in, you know, the singularity into the module. So we now can find, uh, like go on the hunt and find all these shapes. Uh, at least that's what I'm doing. And uh, so, so like it's a very like simple module, and uh, it sounds great. And, and this is uh, yeah, I can like singularities and other sorts of things. And there's another filter. Let's look at this one. It's called uh, the Wasp filter, which uh, has a, uh, like a similar architecture but a different behavior. So it also has bound pass out, and then the low pass, high pass uh, that is sweepable. And uh, maybe we put this into uh, the mixer and uh, also and it also needs a, like an input signal so let's ingest a uh, like a sawtooth into the audio input of the filter this is a bit loud sorry sorry for that so this would be the wasp filter So I play with the lever, the frequency, it also makes a spiral. I can also twist the spiral. And, but it has a different character, it like makes a growly sound and you can also see that it's not stable. Like the image is like kind of moving around. But if you tune it just right, uh, and uh, you can actually, maybe I have to switch uh, the outputs here. Yeah. Tune it just right, it will make a heart shape actually, which is, uh, which I think Dieter put in there on the purple, or like it's, <laughs> I don't know, like if you play with the resonance and this is, uh, yeah, it's almost a heart, it's like a little bit off, but it's really like finding, it's like it's tuning it to the right uh, behavior and then, so I think it's also, yeah, it's uh, like a resonance cable. So there's almost a heart and uh, we can uh, maybe like uh, modulate, like and make a heartbeat and <laughs> I know it's like, a, like silly stuff. But at the same time, it's very important, I think also that you, if you, I don't know if you noticed that uh, the oscilloscope has two eyes and which is very important. If you have a scope, put some googly eyes on there because it will make a, uh, your life uh, more fun and then you can uh, maybe draw some uh, maybe let's draw like some shapes that look like a mouth and uh, just I don't know why but I think uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is a very good uh, a tool I think to like usually like if you look at these instruments they you know they have sequences and they have uh, quantizers and they kind of put you into um, like a structure how to make music but you can also break free from this. And I, I've, I've, I know some people that uh, were trained musicians and they started to do modular synthesis to unlearn kind of the patterns they were trained at the conservatory maybe. So they, you know, like there was a bass player and he always thinks in bass lines. And once you're told, you know, you're a bass player, you have to make bass lines and then you can't let go of this thought. But with this, maybe you can draw, like uh, this is a very good instrument to unlearn patterns, uh, like musical patterns and to just noodle around or like uh, make sound like a kid would do, just you know, turn knobs and connect cables. And maybe you don't know what you're doing, but uh, it doesn't make any sense or it's like a funny joke with the eyes, but you know that it should be fun. Like as long as it's fun, it is allowed, you know? <laughs> I've heard somebody say it. <laughs> and uh, so let's uh, have some fun with uh, the eyes maybe. 
um, the, I have, um, let's take, uh, let's make the, the shape of the, um, what was it? Uh, um, this was like the diamond shape. And let's put this into, I have this Aikido module, which is like a, a quadruple uh, VCA. So we put this one into the input of the VCA. And then we also, I, I'm slowly running out of space in the mixer. So I have an idea, maybe we run this, uh, these two outputs through a switch. And then we can switch between two shapes back and forth, which is a uh, it's another technique that you could call it multiplexing. So there's a depth of switch. It's kind of a dual switch that will just like voltage control and like switch back and forth. So now we have uh, like one shape going to the switch here. And we need to uh, oops, get the main out out here. And sorry for this, uh, I need a longer cable here. Okay, and then we do the same, we uh, inject the same signal, the switch will, you know, on both axes will get the same switching voltage. So we'll now switch between, let's use this as a switching. And now we see nothing, this is great. But we are we switching, so we see something here. And something is not connected, so we don't see anything. This is in, this is out. <coughs> so we have, oh, this oscillator is really low. And ah, we also need to inject a signal into here. Maybe this one. This should come out. So I've made a, this is the wrong one. So this is not, and only one is showing because the other one is, so this change is going. This one is off, but why? So now the face only like has a very like uh, it's you know the mouth is just a line it's not really satisfied or it's uh, <laughs> since I made a mistake uh, maybe so I will have to find my mistake this goes in here this goes in here and why is the second axis not showing this is this is this one maybe the cable is broken or it's not. Connected. Ah, yeah. There you go. It wasn't. It was a cable that wasn't injected correctly. So now you can you can see that uh, there's a kind of a mouth shape, and you know, like if you modulate uh, like one uh, one uh, axis with uh, like an LFO, for example, uh, we can uh, maybe. <coughs> uh, this is a bit too fast. Let's make this lower, so it kind of opens the mouth and like looks like a beak, maybe from a from a bird, and like starts to talk. Like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> starts to, I don't know, like it's it's a silly thing to do, but uh, it's just uh, I think it's just to have fun with uh, this, uh, like. Uh, so there's uh, like a uh, uh, you know why you have to put googly eyes on the scope. Uh, I think that I put this down. Let's uh, look at some other things, like look at the time. Um, we did the filters. Yeah, I have some uh, other modules that are also nice. Maybe uh, there's uh, a reverb. Let's uh, look at a reverb, maybe. So, uh, like a reverb would also change the phase of uh, 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 the signals or the, the, the reverb algorithm, like this is a DSP rhythm. Uh, reverb, which is kind of a, this is a cloud, a micro cloud, so if you know like the, the modules, we'll take uh, the plates outputs, which is an oscillator output, uh, 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 an oscillator uh, uh, that will go, and that has two outputs, like a uh, like main out and an auxiliary out, 
And if you look at this already uh, with uh, like with no reverb on, let's uh, connect this one into the mixer, then it will look something like so. There's something like this, and then we can crossfade like now this because this is running through a switch. Oh, yeah, there's something missing here. This is the output coming from here. And this will have to go. The mixer has to go. Sorry, now I'm uh, just creating, uh, creating confusion with my own patch. So the mixer will also go into the switch, and we can switch between the mouth kind of uh, patch and uh, and the other patch with. Uh, so this is the output of the blades. And it also kind of like, it, I think there's some wave, wave folding going on. Let's turn this up a little bit. So there's already, you know, a 90 degree phase shift happening here. So you can already play with this module, try to, to find tuning spots. But you know, there's an algorithm that says, you know, like there's, different wave tables and uh, different behaviors that the DSP does. So it already does a lot, a lot of visual stuff, or it can do if you put it up to the scope. And so there are different modes. This is a very simple one. And now if we, like this is going through a, like the cloud, which has a reverb. And if we edit the reverb, let's turn this up a little bit. Can, uh, kind of, this is a very simple unharmonic or that's like very pure tone, and uh, the reverb will animate this shape and kind of make it uh, like move and also like sound nice. You can hear that you know, like the, 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 there's kind of a phasing going on. I'm not controlling this, this is only like the reverb doing its magic, and then if we like tuned in some higher harmonics. of the sound uh, it's kind of derived out of this uh, uncertain or like being like oscillators being out of tune which I think is really an interesting uh, way to to lose control and like to not make it perfect in tune but to kind of uh, make it a little bit out of, side of uh, out of tune and then you know it, it starts to animate itself but now it's in tune or I kind of more in tune it's a different story. Kind of gives, you know, with very little movement of the, of, of the with the oscillator, you can make different modulations. Uh, this sounds kind of wrong, or like, or 
I don't know, there's, there's no right and wrong. I, I, maybe that's the wrong word to say, like right and wrong is not the issue, but kind of you, you go for the image, like I go for the image, the image is kind of the first thing I look at. And um, then, uh, which sounds odd, you know, it's like I don't want to be superficial or anything, but uh, it kind of, uh, if you prioritize the image and then the sound comes along, you you get away from making, you're, in a way you're abusing the sound synthesizer to be a visual a visual control system. And uh, at the same time, you like if you connect this uh, like in the handout, you also get a representation to understand, you know, like the reverb and the filter resonances and like what, you know, the circuits do. So it's a good tool to understand and learn. Uh, this is how I learned. And um, there's also, uh, maybe let's look at some other small DSP modules. Uh, and then I would uh, also maybe like uh, quit and maybe talk a little bit and if you have questions or if anything didn't make sense, maybe. We can, uh, yeah, we can do that. But uh, let's quickly look at some um, other oscillators. Uh, there is also, I can, um, like on the handout, there's also some QR codes that I present. You, if you scan them, you will go to some uh, YouTube videos about this, uh, like the principle how to use an oscilloscope. Uh, that I have been recording with, uh, in collaboration with Batzler, for example, from Bustin, and I uh, also uh, created a, like a sample library uh, with for a module that I don't have in the system, uh, which is the Make Noise Morphogen, which is a stereo sampler, and um, but you know I put the link on the in the QR code, and I can uh, maybe show you some shapes from this. Uh, sample library so if I'm just going to there's a website called free sounds where it's like free to download this uh, reel and uh, so let's bring this down and this up and play this file so now like I'm you know playing a stereo file from my phone uh, you can see that you know, this is Jeremy Spenderson's uh, mushroom he contributed or like this is a collection of uh, vector synthesis uh, samples uh, that people uh, you know like they use code and they like they use different uh, kind of tools they don't only use uh, modular synthesizers and you, they draw shapes and make music with this so uh, if you want to follow up this link and uh, learn about more of uh, artists that work with this they, to crazy stuff. This is like you see that you know the image is very bad because the the the, the output of the phone is uh, not really clean. But if you play this like from a like a good sound card into the scope, then it would look much nicer and not so squiggly. This is Alberto Novella, and also you can like, mix different like different so so it's uh, so there's a sample library to to use or or to like get into and like. Uh, this is a nice song. I like this one with it. And, um, and then, this is a uh, from Robert Henke. And uh, let's try something else. So this is like, yeah, presets, if you will, or like samples, but you can use samplers, you can use external synthesizers, you, I don't know, you can use software to do this. Uh, but of course, you know, like um, if you like, we hear Schneider's Laden, so it's the most. This is like a uh, there's a teapot. So, so, so. I think uh, there's a thing in the, the vector synthesis world about teapots. I don't know why it's like Hansi and Aba playing melodies on a teapot. And uh, let's. Uh, I want to show you one more thing, which is uh, like something I was uh, working on recently, also with a friend who uh, is very good at coding, uh, which I'm not. But he wrote a code for the Leech, which is a module uh, by Rebel Technology, a collaboration by Rebel Technology and Bifaco. And so he wrote, uh, what you basically can do is you can load up different uh, parts of code into the module that will make the module do different things, so it kind of becomes a computer, but uh, 
something that is really hard to do with just modules uh, or analog modules is uh, to create uh, like 3D imagery. And uh, he wrote a, uh, like a piece of code that kind of allows you to do this. So let's maybe put a, let's put a triangle into the input of this module, which is very loud, sorry. And um, so you have to, like the diamond shape and then you can uh, twist uh, things around and kind of uh, make it uh, go in circles around this axis and uh, Maybe this is a... Uh, so you can make kind of a 3D animation out of uh, like something that is that is on a plane and uh, I think there's some... It's not really finished yet and there's... Uh, you can map it to a sphere and uh, so it's, uh, it's still in development but uh, it's uh, kind of uh, playing with the axis of the... You know, and uh, let's look at maybe another oscillator, which is a like chaotic oscillator from Yora. It also has multiple outputs, which looks like this. And then you can like see the spirals and I don't know, like twist them around. And, uh, so that's all like these modules that you can draw shapes with. They can not only produce sound, but uh, they are also interesting to look at. And uh, yeah, um, I think um, if you have any questions or any uncertainties about what I said, I don't know if I uh, was uh, all too clear about uh, what uh, is happening. And uh, please ask the questions. Of, uh, Let's have like a conversation maybe or some ideas or uh, I know that uh, I want to mention that Sasha is here, here still. Uh, Sasha is here. Uh, I Sasha is here. I want to announce he has uh, he and uh, Evan he was also here. They have uh, at the moment an exhibition uh, and um, you have to help me out. And how hotel. And it's very much about uh, vector. It's all oscillographic uh, imagery and uh, like with prints on the wall. And also, I think at the opening there, the presentation with Vectrex and laser. And I would have loved to go uh, to go there, and uh, I didn't make it. But please visit the exhibition. It's open. Uh, uh, and another month. Uh, talk to them about it uh, if you're interested. I would uh, recommend you to go and see this exhibition. Uh, this is uh, just uh, the only advertisement I want to make. And uh, yeah, what is it called, the exhibition? It's called Hear What You See, no? Yeah, what you see. Hear What You See. So the principle is kind of, you know, it's around the same principle, and, you know, they, there's different um, <coughs> outputs, like there's a laser output and there's a matrix output. and. Uh, and there's also still photography of uh, the imagery, so uh, it's kind of c captured into the moment. And yeah, so I'm uh, ready. Like we can have uh, some drinks, talk about this. Or you, can, you are released from the vector synthesizer craze. <laughs> and uh, thank you for your kind attention. And if you have any questions or like if something was unclear or you want me to show something again or I don't know, like we can, yeah, now is the time, don't be shy. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I try to uh, clarify any uh, things that weren't clear. If, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Werner. Thank you all for coming. I also have a recommendation because uh, you don't only do this on our oscilloscope, you usually have your laser with, laser with you, which is very, very impressive to see. Um, I just wanted to mention that there are videos online, but if you get the chance, check out the uh, VR laser shows. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to bring the laser this time because then, you know, like, I wanted to go more into the, like, the real basic principle. Yeah. But usually, like, it's, it has a laser and you can make it really big on, on big walls and it's super impressive because it has three colors and it's uh, amazing and also 
that's now this is how I got into like also making laser shows and I hope to come back to Berlin and maybe perform or like do visuals uh, like uh, live visuals and uh, yeah this is but this is the basic principle if you want to get into this kind of uh, visualization and uh, visual work start with an oscilloscope they are pretty cheap to pick up uh, um, online on uh, like maybe Canon Zeigen or something like this uh, you could, like I wouldn't pay more than 50 euros for it uh, but uh, yeah people are throwing them out sometimes and all you need is like two channel inputs and then the X Y or and yeah the, of course it's like a bulky thing that takes space there's also modules that uh, are oscilloscope uh, uh, mo dedicated oscilloscope modules that sit in the rack but then they take up rack space so I wouldn't recommend them, even though they are super nice and cool. Uh, yeah, so questions or drinks, those are the two options. There are also softwares, to, like software machine scope that. I think there is, if you like, you follow the, uh, the QR code, there's uh, one that says the vector synthesis is real from the morphogen. There's a list of. Uh, artists uh, that work with uh, different uh, tools and there's one called Hansi Raber who makes a, a software called Ostsee Studio and which is it's like super powerful what it does it takes 3D objects out of Blender and draws the outline of the 3D object and creates it into an XY or like into a stereo sound file and I think embedded into into the software is also like uh, like a digital oscilloscope that you can use on the computer. So if you have an audio interface with two inputs, uh, you're ready to go and have kind of an emulation of like an analog oscilloscope.